All right, now, everybody. Quiet, listen to me. We're going to start a show. Now, some of you people have been with me before. You know it's going to be a tough grind. But we're going to have a show. And hello, all. It is a great day on the West Coast as we begin to dry out. It's been pretty ugly, I'll be honest with you. But uh, through it all, we've been here. Yes, we have. This program has continued. Albert is here today, everyone. I Albert, know he thank is you. a fan favorite, so I'd like to introduce him first. Kim, also very popular. <laughs> How are you? And she is here, too. I and, just feel uh, like I got second runner-up. Well, you did, honestly. I, I uh, think you, you actually picked that up well. Um, you know what you can do with the number two tiara? Oh, uh, wow. Wow. You know, I... Yeah. Let's get into uh, <laughs> these uh, arguments later. Something to look forward to. We've got, uh, speaking of things to look forward to, Rothman it joins us today. He's really popular. We're exploiting his popularity for clicks and views, you know. But we'll uh, break down what has really been a less than successful session for the GOP uh, from a legislative standpoint. I mean, they're, even their lack of legislative agenda, which it's all motivated by hate, it, uh, it looks not to be on track. You know, they can't pull off this impeachment of Mayorkas. I mean, it was a, it's crazy anyway. I mean, crazy for reasons I can discuss with John, but just, you know, right off the hop, it's just, it's jihadist. It's typical GOP jihad. They pick a guy out, they pick a problem, like the border, which has existed for, as an issue I'm talking about, for several presidencies now and on back. I mean, it's been an issue that has been vexing to this country. There is... No simple solution. There has to be a multi-dimensional solution involving greater border security, technology at the border. The physical wall thing was weak. I mean, it was a giveaway, as you know. I've made this point to a lot of uh, Trump donors. But more to the point, there does need to be some physical limitation and some, as I suggested, technology employed to help maintain some sort of reasonable border at the particularly southern border of this country. So we, we I think, agree on this in the main. And there have to be many more immigration judges and all the rest. But instead of addressing these things, some of which are addressed in this GOP-driven immigration reform bill, they can't pass that and they pursue this policy of impeachment of Mayorkas, who's, as Homeland Security Director, you know, it falls under his power. And I'm smiling because it's just absurdist. It's like, in a way, I'd suggest it would be like impeaching the Department of Commerce head for a bad economy or economic issues or, you know what I mean? It's... Uh, it's symbolic, and that really is what this party, the GOP, is about these days. They're about symbolism. So I'll talk more with uh, John Rothman about that, but I just think it's such a mess, and it reflects such a an incompetence and a lack of a real legislative agenda, and it's just, it's all really sloppy. So uh, we'll talk to Rothman, as I say, about that. I was reading something about how a Republican senator said, you know what, even the other side knows how to count votes. Like they don't bring something like this to the floor for a vote unless they know for sure they're going to be able to pass it. And this thing lost by what, one vote? Right. The, the Mayorkas impeachment. Right. It's like, can you not figure out ahead of time who's on board and who isn't? And if, it, if you're not on board, if you don't have enough, then don't bring it. Now they're talking about bringing it for a second vote you know, is the same thing going right. to happen? Oh, Are yeah. they going no, to try to pressure people? They're insisting that they're actually like, going to get it through. Look, you know, it, it, it's it's not going to lead to the removal of Mayorkas, obviously. But, no, it um, isn't. And what's the point then? Because now you're just embarrassing yourself. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, well, from our perspective, they're embarrassing, embarrassing themselves. I mean, from their perspective, they would say, well, why, are you, why did you bring impeachment charges against Donald Trump? You know, you, you knew they weren't going to pass. You knew he wasn't going to be removed. Why did you do it? You're just embarrassing yourselves. Uh, now, the difference, I'd suggest, is because <laughs> there is real evidence of malfeasance, of uh, mm-hmm. criminal activity, even in the case of uh, Donald Trump. But uh, it's certainly activity that would violate constitutional oath, and that's what that was about. We'll, we'll, let's, we'll table it till we speak with uh, John Rothman. That'll be a uh, bottom of this hour. More proof of Pelosi's expertise as speaker. Exactly. It's kind of what Kim was saying. Thank you, Copper, which is Pelosi knew she had the votes or she didn't have the votes. Yeah. So I wanted to acknowledge Angela Silva. Big shout Big out. Big shout out because right at the close of business yesterday, she slipped in with a $10 super sticker. So we was very what? excited. Yeah, to see that and to acknowledge her so again Big shout out thank you angela silva we're crowdfunded show so when you hit us with super stickers super chats that all matters to our bottom line it helps keep people like albert around and albert uh, thank you you know that's uh that's important so and we know that because he's number one he is number one and it might <laughs> kim felt slighted by that yeah i said what? i didn't say he's number one i said he's a fan favorite is what In I the said. Mark Thompson Miss America contest, I just got runner up. No, I, I mm-hmm. said he's a fan favorite again, mm. Kim. You have, Ch-ch-ch-ch. but you know, Kim, how are you? If you really want to get into it, I can. There's a reason uh, this place is fun. Yeah, I am just <laughs> saying. That Kim, Albert... I'm also Filipino, so Miss Universe mm. and those type of pageants are up my alley. We're yeah, last that's two, true. Last two in the past six, I think. Two in the past six. So, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Albert is padding his lead. Wow. Fan favorite. And by the way, I've got Miss Universe locked up too. Uh, Would you like to you, apologize for what you've done? N- no, I You're I saying racially apologize. you're predisposed to win the uh the who's the favorite contest? All right. I'll give gotta, you that. <laughs> I'm just I'm just going with the You're fast, kind of my and, favorite you know. too. So, you know, in the scheme oh, of things, I totally get it. Yeah. Kim is yeah. jumping on board. I yeah. blame you. Uh, all right. <laughs> That's Kim's drop. I blame you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right, uh, Albert, I I also got an email in. I just want to, um, and it's disturbing. And it's disturbing because I did sort of omit something that I really shouldn't have omitted. The Mark Thompson Show. Let me see if I can find this email quickly. Um, oh, I've got an update on the luggage, which continues in... Chile, and I don't need to tell you what's happening in Chile. Um, it's crazy what's happening with the luggage. I mean, I may never get that luggage back. <laughs> um, well, wait a minute. Didn't you pay the gazillion dollars to have it shipped? I paid thousands, yeah, yeah, because I want to just see if so, they can actually return it. And they still... I'll, I'll read you the latest. Uh, here, you want you want that first? Yes, I do. Okay, I do. it's crazy. It just, it just hit. Um, you know, minutes ago. Now, I called this. Remember, I said it was all a scam. They want your money and you're never getting your luggage back. You did. We'll see if that indeed is the case. I hope this email finds you well. We wanted to reach out to you to let you know we are working on the return of your luggage. If you're working just joining us and you don't know the story, I'll just tell it to you in 20 seconds or less. Uh, they tell you to put your luggage outside of your room uh, before the... Um, uh, start of the next day, you tag it specially, and then you'll pick it up at the dock. So between my room, this is on a cruise ship, between my room and the dock is 80 feet. So there's, it's not being transported any further than that, not to a hotel, not to an airline, nothing. It just pick it up right there on the dock. But this way, you don't have to carry it off the boat. So when I got down to the dock, of course, my luggage was missing, and it has been missing since. Now they've located it, and they've asked for thousands of dollars to return it. Uh, we hope this finds you well. We wanted to reach out to you to let you know we are working on the return of your luggage. I've paid the ransom money, and now I'm waiting for the luggage, as you know. So we were informed by representatives in Valparaiso, that's, um, again, in Chile, that there are t- that's the, the port town, that there are technical issues preventing the shipping of your luggage. Yeah. The shipping label is giving them an error message resulting in this unfortunate delay. I'm sure it is. We understand you already paid for shipping. Please know we are prioritizing your luggage and will not stop until this is resolved. At this time, we will attempt to print the shipping label from the U.S. and send it to Chile. We remain in contact and give you updates as we receive it. 
This is bogus. I wrote back, um, thank you for the update. The whole thing is disturbing and disheartening, I said. How much time has to pass before a customer's luggage lost by cruise line incompetence is returned safely? It's extraordinary, really. I'd love to know what actually happened to produce this madness. Thank you for the update. That's what I said. So. Good customer service would be, sir, we are so sorry that your luggage was stolen out of our hallway. Let us bend over backwards to do everything we can to return it. You don't have to pay a cent. We will work on this. We will investigate this. We will send it to you. Instead, no. they ask you to cough up thousands of dollars, and then they send you that WTF message. We're working to print a label? What? Yeah, I know. It's really pretty cool, wild. Having trouble printing a label? What's going on? Guys. What the hell um, is going on in the United States of America? Thank you. Thank you. Russ says it's utter should insanity. contact the cruise lines directly. But it wasn't, I don't think it was stolen out of the hallway. I think it, they just they just screwed up. Like they just got it all confused or whatever. I don't know what happened. But I really would love to know. So anyway, that's the latest on the uh, on the on the luggage but i did um the mark thompson show i did get another email i've received a lot of positive letters what the hell was it where is it can't seem to find it i got came in last night and it was asking how come we haven't mentioned we look here um what did no, we anyway mention? they they asked how come we didn't do something on groundhog day and they asked, which I'm so sorry, I can't rem find the email. I believe it was Bradley oh. sent an email saying, and weren't you in Groundhog Day, the movie? You Were you? Uh, no, I was uh -oh. not. But I do have a connection <laughs> to the movie. I mean, a real connection to the movie. Um, Groundhog Day, when they were writing the weatherman part. Yeah. The Groundhog Day, for those who haven't seen it, he's a weatherman, he lives this Groundhog Day, they cover Groundhog Day, and then he has to relive Groundhog Day. You know, it's like this hell yeah. that he's in where, you're at, where, he, where Groundhog Day just happens over and over and over again. There, he's a weatherman. And I was a weatherman at uh, Weather Forecast, or whatever you want to call it, at um, the station in Los Angeles. And they called me and said, can we come over and spend the day with you so we can write the weatherman part accurately. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay, so Harold Ramis, you know Harold Ramis. <laughs> so the moody weather guy is based on you? <laughs> and how dare you? How dare you? <laughs> what? The moody, rude, grumpy weather guy wow, who's complaining wow. about know, everything. I, 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 I'm kind of a big deal. I, I really didn't expect that, Albert. <laughs> I mean, how can she go? She takes what no is an extraordinary the brag. Yeah. They wrote the entire thing around me. What does she do, Kim? I can see now why people are turning on you, Kim. <laughs> because you somehow turned it into an insult. Why are you yelling? Have you seen the movie? I saw it. His disposition isn't what they were writing around me. Maybe it is. Maybe that's exactly what they were uh, looking for. Uh, how dare you? I mean, Seriously? What the <laughs> I don't understand it. Anyway, can you let him finish, sir? Yes. Could you let me finish, please? Uh huh. So they spent the day with me writing the weather person part, and um, no, the weather guy, it's mm -hmm. Steve Martin, played an LA story was not based on me, John. But anyway, that is my connection to Groundhog Day. Thank you for asking about it. Um, and it was pretty cool, though. To you know. But clearly not cool enough for Kim. So I, <laughs> I'm really, I, really, I don't know. I'm getting disrespected on this show I more think and more. It, I think it is very cool. And now I understand that movie in a whole new way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you Kim, really you? just do that? Yeah, really. Kim is, Kim is really feeling it. Am I right, Jenny? Yeah. Kim is really feeling it. Gosh. Good stuff. Uh, There's a reason that this place is fine. All right, let me uh, now just quickly, I have to do it. Um, I don't want to do it, but I have to uh, check in with the commish who's back on the show now. So you got Super Bowl Sunday, commish. You have the Niners in the Super Bowl. And not an unfamiliar place for the Niners. A lot of communities wait years, even decades, for their team to be in the Super Bowl. Not the case for the San Francisco Bay Area, the fabulous Niners have been there before. What happened the last time the Niners were playing the Chiefs in the Super Bowl? I kind of forget. 
Um, it was actually the last big event before COVID, which was uh, people are pointing that out. Uh, mm -hmm. And also, the Niners had a ten-point lead going into the. Thank fourth you. Quarter. That's what I wanted. Yeah, yes, that's that the yeah. answer. And we blew the lead, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. So Kyle yeah. Shanahan, that that was his first Super Bowl as a head coach. He's the Niners' head coach. He was also the offensive coordinator for the Falcons, who lost mm -hmm. to the Patriots, who are historically up by twenty-eight to three. Yeah, that was an insane time. lead that they gave up. That was unbelievable. Twenty-eight to three. Yeah, so that was when he was a, the Falcons' offensive coordinator, not the head coach, but coordinator. But that kind of tag choking in big games has followed him. So, I um, do you have so a prediction on this game, Kamish? What what what's that, sir? The, the last few games this season in the playoffs were kind of like getting the monkey off of his back, kind of like the Super Bowl for Steve Young in nineteen ninety four. The last uh, time the Niners won. He got that monkey off his back to win one his first one as a starting quarterback. So I feel like we're 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 defying all odds and we're defying what we're known for this year. So I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good. Well, I think Niners fans can take a little bit of good news from the fact that again, the Niners were up by ten points against a probably a better Kansas City Chiefs team uh, in that last Super Bowl outing that they faced the Chiefs. A more explosive team, and we had a, but we also had a better defense that year, and our defense uh, is that strong. So I feel like it kind of evens out. Nick Bosa's angry that he's been holding, uh, he's been held so much. He says the Chiefs have are been holding constantly on third and long, and he's complaining to the refs ahead of time, saying, "Hey, you know, this is what happens when we play the Chiefs. I get held," and so there's that. The other thing that's going on from the Chiefs side is that they're playing in Las Vegas, and Patrick Mahomes is concerned that a lot of these young guys, you know, who are excited to be in Vegas, Super Bowl, right? They're invited to every party on the Strip, uh, that they're going to be distracted. So Mahomes is saying that if, and this is a shout-out to his entire team, he said, if you will focus on this game and ignore all the distractions of Las Vegas, I will take the entire team to Las Vegas if we win the Super Bowl. This is a business trip, he says. It's a quote. I told the guys that if we win, I'll bring everyone back to Vegas to celebrate. So he's that aware. That like a ringing endorsement for his teammates. They're showing, showing any <laughs> trust. There seems to be a lack of trust within that team. Oh, you don't think he should have to make an offer like that, right? I think it's, they should know that this is the biggest games of their lives. This is what their careers, this is everything they dream of. It's the Super Bowl. Yeah. And the distractions actually has touched his family. Uh, his dad was actually just arrested a few days ago yeah, for, for a DWI. So Yeah, how about that? Of course, Pat, Pat Sr., who played uh, baseball as a relief pitcher. Gosh. Good knowledge. That's why they call him the commish. Very impressive. All right, we'll hit you um, on Friday for your official prediction. But uh, if you just missed it, uh, the commish feels that there's a good chance that the Niners don't give up a 10-point lead this time and uh, actually prevail. He says, he says there's some uh, – he feels good about it is what the commissioner's office actually uh, – I would love for Christian McCaffrey to get 30 carries and just run all over the Chiefs. We don't have to worry about anything. Just pound the rock. We have the best – he's the best player, skill player in the league. So Pound the rock. Pound the rock. Yeah. Mark Thompson show. There you go. Meantime, in California, just to give you a quick sense of it before I get into politics with John Rothman, it's been a pretty brutal period. I mean, there are major hillside problems with cliff slides and mudslides, and it's affected historic homes from the Santa Barbara coast down to Ventura, down to Los Angeles, into San Diego. Really brutal. Most of Southern California was under flood watches and so much rain. They had essentially an entire season's rainfall in two days. And I'll make you aware again, I think I mentioned this the other day, that you know the thing about this soil is that it absorbs the moisture and then the rain stops and two weeks later you have a big slide. It's very common. So you, you feel as though you're never really out from under it, you know. But um, 
The rain has, for the most part, stopped. There's still pockets of rain in Southern California. I just saw that somebody said in the chat in Albany, in Northern California, it's pouring rain right now. Yeah, so, we're getting rain here also in the East Bay, in Union City. Yeah. So, it has been. It just seems to be uh, following us. No we've matter been getting what. pummeled in the North Bay this morning. Like the sky opened up. Oh. Yeah. I want to thank in the chat the gentleman who always brings us the uh, birthdays. That's Walter. There is uh, some of the, yeah, if you're looking, that's uh, some of the, uh, that's one of the examples of some of the issues that they've had with standing water and also with uh, everything being washed away. I mean, I, I, it's, I don't know the context of this particular shot, but it's a, a car that's been essentially submerged up to the windshield with two rescue workers trying to get somebody out. But I wanted to acknowledge it's Al Warden's birthday today, and I know that only because Walter put it in there alongside Charles Dickens and Sinclair Lewis and Chris Rock. Al Warden, I knew Al Warden. He was a brilliant NASA astronaut. And when I say brilliant, I'm not just throwing that word in. He was a poet and a writer and a thinker and a brilliant test pilot when they were just coming up with this. And he was in the Apollo command module for Apollo 15's lunar mission in 1971. He's one of 24 people who flew to the moon. And he was also good friends with Mr. Rogers. And I mean, I, I mentioned that because I think he was bringing science to younger people and I also mentioned it because I think he was one of those, uh, you know, broad thinkers. He was a real, reflective, brilliant man, as well as being ultra skilled in, as a navigator and as an aviator. In fact, he told NASA, I won't fly back from the moon and I won't go on this mission at all unless you let me use my coordinates and actually let me navigate back from the moon. Whoa. Like, I don't want a computer projection. I don't want, you know, and they agreed. He was a real star. And so uh, thank you for reminding me, Walter, of uh, Al Warden's birthday. So uh, happy birthday, Al Warden. Rest in peace. He died just a couple of years ago in 2020. He was 88 when he passed away. So. The Mark Thompson Show. All right, so uh, we have politics to come with John Rothman. Before we get to that, I wanted to let you know something. Uh, any fans of Target here? You like your Target? Target is planning something that you may need to know about. And I, I don't know that you're going to like it. Oh, maybe you will like it. Maybe this is what gets the... The riffraff out and Target can finally become the country club you've wanted it to be. They are going to start charging a paid membership to Target. What? Yeah. Like Costco? Yes, like Costco or Amazon Prime. What? Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> you want me to pay for the privilege of, sho uh, of shopping at Target? That is what I'm saying. No, 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 no. It would be similar to what is at uh, Amazon and Walmart with free shipping and extra discounts. It's not as though you would be barred from going to Target if you're not a member, at least so far. I mean, who knows? Maybe it will, as I say, become an exclusive club. Are they going to cut their prices because I have to now front the membership cost? Well, you say that with a little bit of an attitude, Kim, like you're not I so on board with attitude. this. I do have uh, an attitude about that. Yes. The new pro program, which is internally titled as Project Trident, could launch as soon as this year, Kim. That would make it different from Costco. Customers have to be members at a cost of $60 a year just to shop at the stores or online. In this case, it would allow you the membership to get discounts. But if you weren't a member, you could still go into Target, as I was saying. There are no mm. details of the pricing of the membership program. But if it, it is like Amazon and Walmart, it'd be around $10 to $15 a month. The Amazon Prime membership costs $15 a month, $14.99. Um, wait, 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 wait. How mm -hmm. much do they want to charge me at Target to be a member? A about the same. Uh, somewhere between $10 and $15 a month. No. 
I'm not doing that. Okay. Sayonara, Target. We hardly Target. knew you. I'm out. <laughs> Sayonara, sucker. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, it's uh, honestly, they're not the first ones to this party. I mean, you're drawing a line at Target, but, you know, Walmart Plus oh. exists, Amazon Prime, Kroger's has a, a program like this. So this is kind of the way the retail industry is going in many ways. Everybody wants more money. PG&E. Yeah. I mean, everybody wants more. How much more can we give? Forget yeah. it, Target. I'll buy my whatever I'm buying somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Good day, sir. Yeah, I'll buy my whatever I'm buying somewhere else. The Mark Thompson What do you want to do here, Albert? You run this thing. You are the uh, producer of this show. You're in the captain's chair. Albert, you thank call you. the shots. You're the top dog, the big cheese. It's your strategy that we follow on this show. You're the architect. You're and the big view, man. Why are you yelling? Tell me what. A fan what, favorite. What and a fan favorite. <laughs> what do we do? I have John Rothman in the green room. Talking politics today, there's a lot to talk about. It's not yeah. just Trump, but Trump will be something we'll touch on. But I also have Kim. She's not as popular as you are, it's true. <laughs> but uh, she does have... Kim, how are you? I think her superpower is the news. I always uh -huh. like to get it on whenever I can, that newscast. What do you think we should do? Yeah, we, let's get to the news and then... Uh... Kind of quick news, but not, not a turbo news, but kind of super, like a quicker news, and then we'll get to Rodman. Great. That's the plan. Smash the like Smash button it like a boss. With your iron rod. Smash that like button with your iron rod. Smash it with your iron rod. Damn it. Make it count. Give us a thumbs up. It costs you nothing. Kim's News and then the great Rothman. Mark Thompson Show. <laughs> the Mark Thompson Show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister, and this report is sponsored by Coachella Valley Coffee at CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer plans to drop the border provisions and force a vote only on the aid for Israel, Ukraine, and Taiwan from a bipartisan border deal expected to be voted down shortly. Senate Republicans are expected to shoot down a $118 billion border security and foreign aid package. They claim the bill doesn't go far enough in stopping the flow of illegal immigration. Five U.S. Marines still unaccounted for after a missing Marine helicopter was found today in California. That chopper reported missing last night was found in Pine Valley, just over 40 miles east of San Diego. The helicopter was being used in a training flight from Creech Air Force Base near Las Vegas when it was reported overdue. A man appears to have been able to scale the Las Vegas sphere. There are reports traffic around the venue is shut down and police are en route. Video showed the man atop the 366 foot tall structure. U2 is scheduled to perform at the venue tonight. Hopefully they can what? get him down before then. <laughs> you can't scale the sphere. Come on. More rain and mountain snow heading to Southern California this afternoon and tonight. You guys have a lull right now, but it's coming back for you. The region's still trying to recover from a Pineapple Express that dumped a record-setting rainfall and caused nearly 500 landslides since Sunday. That storm has been blamed for nine deaths so far. House Speaker Mike Johnson admits last night's failed impeachment of Alejandro Mayorkas was a mess, but he said he's ready to give it another shot. A small group of Republicans broke from party lines and voted against the impeachment of the Department of Homeland Security Secretary. A Republican-led standalone bill to provide aid to Israel also failed in the House. Uh, Ongoing rainstorm, we mentioned this briefly, They've ke it's kept Los Angeles firefighters and structural engineers very busy. Since Sunday, the city has re received nearly 500 reports of mudslides, 390 reports of fallen trees. Crews also put out a dozen structure fires, made several water rescues. Elsewhere, 919 spots where stormwater systems became clogged have been cleared out. The city has also taken 440 reports of new potholes. Someone call Arnold Schwarzenegger. Get him out there. The LA Department of Water and Power <laughs> has restored electricity to more than 59,000 customers. 
Speaking of Los Angeles, the county paid out a record amount of money to settle legal claims in 2023. Nearly $1 billion in taxpayer funds were distributed to parties who sued Los Angeles County. The Sheriff's Department uh, shouldered the largest percentage of that burden with high-profile cases, including that of Vanessa Bryant, who received nearly $29 million after first responders shared photos of the crash that killed her husband and daughter. Street vendors will soon no longer uh, be banned from popular tourist destinations in Los Angeles, including Dodger Stadium, a Hollywood Bowl, and the Hollywood Walk of Fame. L.A. City Council rescinding that ban yesterday. It had been in effect since 2018. What's the ban on? I'm sorry. It was on street vendors. Oh, sure. At all yeah. the popular tourist destinations. Well, now this new ordinance amending the current vending laws is expected to take effect in March. So they pulled yeah. the old one. Video of a funnel cloud off the Southern California coast making the rounds on social media this morning. People in San Luis Obispo and Arroyo Grande reported seeing it Tuesday afternoon. Weather experts say it was a cold air funnel, actually a small tornado. Cold air funnels often turn into thunderstorms or rain showers, and they're generally harmless. Don't don't worry about it. This little tornado, you know, in California, where we don't have tornadoes. <laughs> Global warming? I don't know. We do. It's not that we don't, but you're right. We don't. We don't have them as they do in the Midwest. You're absolutely no. right about that. Rappers Master P and Snoop Dogg are filing a lawsuit against food retailers they claim are keeping their cereals off shelves. They say Post and Walmart teamed up to ruin their deal to sell Snoop cereal and Mama Snoop. TMZ reporting the two rappers hired famed criminal attorney Benjamin Crump to wow. file that lawsuit. Mm. What the hell is going on in the United <laughs> States of America? What do Ooh. they uh, they call one of them those Snoop Loops? I think <laughs> uh, you know what I'm saying. It sounds a lot like Fruit yeah. Loops. I, I I don't mean to get too deep into the cereal controversy, but I do mm -hmm. suggest to you that Snoop, Snoop Loops. I think it's, it's Snoop Loops. Yeah, Snoop Snoop Loops. Yeah, I mean, isn't that a lot like Fruit Loops? And I don't know. I'm not. I'm just saying it's a Snoop Loop. I can understand why you got sued. Okay, maybe that's another way. <laughs> okay. This report sponsored by CoachellaValleyCoffee.com. Oh, the yeah. The best coffee, the best way to pamper yourself in the morning or all through the day. You got the Coachella Valley Coffee and Mark's, Mark Thompson Show coffee mug over there. Yes. Uh, you got the tea over here. Yes. I'm telling you, the ginger We have mint. to order tea, more tea here at the Sounds house. weird. Yeah. Oh, the vanilla tea is so good. The mango, the hibiscus tea, if you like a nice little punch uh, flavor in your tea so good coachellavalleycoffee.com and because you're a mark thompson show listener you get 10 percent off so when you get to the checkout enter mark t all together in the code mark t and get your 10 percent off and you see that money just fly right off your total feel good and go for it and then the box of good stuff arrives on your porch and you're in business wow I'm, yeah That's i know it. it's, it's that easy love a good coachellavalleycoffee.com right on. i'm kim kim McAllister. this is the Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. Who's Mark Thompson? My wife wants some vegetables for crudite. Emil Schaffhausen, Jada had nothing to do with it. I completely disagree. Person, woman, man, camera, TV. And this is their new hoax. Why are you yelling? You do not know what you are talking about. It was great. I loved it. Listen to me. I don't want to hear you. Saudi Arabia pays cash. It was wrong. It was stupid. And I'm trying to be a better person. Hey, Mark. It's George Santos here. A lot of people are telling me you're a liar. Seriously? Yeah, what up? What the, what the, what is it? I mean, what's going on here? Thank you. 
It is always great to be here on Wednesdays because I get to talk to a guy who is a presidential historian. He's a political historian as well, a lecturer, former talk show host on KGO Radio where we first met. Uh, he's just a great presence here and people love him. So how about it for the great John Rothman, everyone? Hello, John. You are, of course, the host of Around the Political World with John Rothman. And uh, we'll mention it again toward the end. What is Good. the political world uh, populated by now? The GOP on the House side trying to mount a an impeachment of uh, the head of Homeland Security. That didn't go well. And now they're trying to mount a funding package for Israel and Ukraine. That doesn't seem to be going well. What's happening up there? The Republican Party is a mess. And let me point out to you, not only they fail on the Mallorca's impeachment, but they're going to bring it back. But they're also in chaos at the Republican National Committee. Donald Trump has decided to remove Rana Romney McDaniel. Now, by the way, nobody uses the middle name Romney anymore because Donald Trump hates Mitt Romney. So it's just Rana McDaniel. Well, she's on her way out. And uh, the National Committee is a mess. They're not raising money. Uh, Trump is very upset about it. And so that's another indicator of the chaos in the Republican Party, not to mention that tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock West Coast time, we will be able to listen to the Supreme Court begin the debate over whether or not Donald Trump should be taken off the ballot. But wait, that's not all. You now have a district court, which is ruled, and if you read the opinion, it's a stunner, that Donald Trump will not get immunity, which means if he doesn't have immunity, all bets are off. He's going to be subject to everything, and there may be more lawsuits coming. So may I say for the Republican Party, it is a tremendous challenge, but let's not forget what happened in Nevada yesterday. Uh, and that is that Nikki Haley was defeated by none of the above. Did you hear that? None of the above. Uh, it, it really is astounding. And if I can, one more quickie. And that is that uh, when all is said and done, if the delegates are being selected now are all pledged to Donald Trump, the question you have to ask is, what happens if Donald Trump is not going to be the Republican nominee. What happens to those delegates? And that is going to be a real question uh, for the Republican uh, National Committee to select because there is no convention after the adjournment. So if something happens between the convention and the election, the Republican National Committee is on the spot to choose the new candidate, which explains why uh, Nikki Haley is still active why Ron DeSantis suspended his campaign, didn't withdraw, because if there's an open convention, Mark, you'll have to have me on more than once a week. <laughs> well, that will be in a time that we're already seeing things we never thought we'd see. That would be an extraordinary But may I offer you the of sage events. advice? Just remember, as you go through the whole thing with your luggage, everybody has their own bag. Wow. He was so good till he went for the... Uh, till he went with the <laughs> All right. Now, um, I, I want to just I want to speak to you, you've you've laid out so many things, but I, I'm, I okay. I want to speak about something else. So I'll get to the Trump thing in a second. Let's talk about Nikki Haley. Uh, as you say that you know she these are miserable showings. Now you just mentioned the, in Nevada, more people you know went for none of the above than they did for Haley. Uh, she's doing what now, John Rothman? She's just hanging out till, as you say, something, if Trump falters, then she's available? Exactly. You got it. That's it. Okay. Okay. Uh, now I want to talk about Trump and the delay tactics, because even with the immunity uh, appellate ruling from the court this week um, that former President Donald Trump is not immune from prosecution for alleged crimes that he committed during his presidency, I mean, it's a, it's a historic decision. It's, it's uh, it, let me just say... It is consistent with the United States versus Richard Nixon, where the court ruled eight to nothing with Bill Rehnquist uh, recusing himself, that a president has the right to executive privilege, but not if a criminal matter is involved. And that is the whole issue. I'm so glad you mentioned Richard Nixon because Michael Conway, who was counsel for the House Judiciary Committee in the impeachment inquiry of Richard Nixon, this is 1974, he's a graduate of Yale Law, um, he's a brilliant uh, lawyer, he wrote an op-ed, and I wanted to share a couple of elements with you. Uh, you sort of share that uh, Nixon tie. 
for many who don't know, uh, John Rothman was connected to the Nixon White House, I believe. Um, but he suggests it would be wrong to mistake the decision on Donald, Donald Trump's uh, prosecution for alleged crimes, that is, that he's not immune so he can be prosecuted, as some kind of clear-cut victory for efforts to try Trump before the election. In fact, the timing of the ruling only increases the likelihood, he says, that Trump's strategy of delaying the outcome of this criminal trial beyond November will succeed. The Circuit Court of Appeals in D.C. took 28 days since hearing oral arguments to issue its unanimous decision rejecting Trump's immunity claim. That's a time frame that could have been much shorter if the court had acted faster. Now, when combined with the methods Trump can employ to further appeal the case, dragging the proceedings out past the fall is highly likely, he says. Uh, and he goes on to sort of suggest that this stall, run-out-the-clock strategy of Donald Trump's may prevail. Thoughts, John Rothman? It's possible, but I, I have great faith in the system, although a lot of people think I'm nuts for saying that. I think the Supreme Court is going to, as we'll see tomorrow morning, where there will be beginning at uh, 6 o'clock San Francisco time, West Coast time, we'll be able to listen to the argument as to whether Donald Trump participated in insurrection and whether that should disqualify him uh, from uh, the ballot altogether. I think it's moving inexorably uh, toward a conclusion, and I think Donald Trump can postpone, but I think I think it's uh, highly unlikely we won't have a decision before the election. And uh, the question really is... In my it's highly mind, unlikely that we won't have a decision. That's an, another way of putting that is we will have an a decision before the I election. I believe so. Okay. I think there is... I think Chief Justice Roberts understands that a lot rides on the question of whether the Supreme Court measures up. I can't tell you how the Supreme Court will vote. Uh, nobody knows. You never know until the vote is actually uh, taken. But... I think Roberts has a sense of history, and he doesn't want to see the Supreme Court sullied by another decision. Remember what happened in Bush v. Gore, and I, I reflect on this with you. Uh, I think it's important to do it. Uh, with Bush v. Gore, the Supreme Court basically decided who would be president of the United States, and it tarnished. That's absolutely true. It may be worth just reviewing in 30 seconds what happened, because it was what you just said is 100% correct. Yeah, you know, they, they, the, the Supreme Court on a five to four vote stopped the vote counting in Florida, essentially declaring it was over. Uh, Al Gore. And, and on what grounds did they stop the count? As you say, it did happen. On what grounds? Uh, because there was a majority of five who wanted it stopped, pure and simple. And there was no uh, reason to stop the vote no. counting. And if you read the dissent by Stephen Breyer, which is one of the most brilliant dissents, he, he addresses that question. But let me let me just make it clear. I think Roberts is a, is a responsible uh, chief justice. I think he understands what it would mean if the Supreme Court does not weigh in. These are decisions that have to be made that not only affect the presidency of Donald Trump or a future presidency, but all future presidents. Uh, and there is a fundamental question you have to ask. Is the president above the law? And you could, or Albert could, find the clip from the David Frost interview where Richard Nixon says, if a president does it, it's not illegal. Uh, and of course, that was a, a black mark, an absolute disgrace, because no one is above the law. And that was the point of the United States versus Richard Nixon. Uh, if the Supreme Court accepts the case, as you suggested they should, the Supreme, this is just on the immunity. The Supreme Court just can immunity. Act They've accepted the case on which we'll on 14th start tomorrow Amendment. on the right. question of whether or not insurrection occurred Fourteenth uh, Amendment, Section Three: Whether or not Donald Trump should be barred from running for president, they've done right. that already. So this would be the immunity now that Correct. would become up because now you'd appeal if you're Trump's people. The appellate court has ruled. Now they want to appeal to the Supreme Court if they. By the way, you know when that you know when they have to make a decision by by February twelfth. Now, so, okay, everybody, stretch your memories. What is February twelfth? If you went to school when I went to school. It's Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Yeah. So this, there's a certain symmetry, a certain uh, logic uh, to uh, what happens in life. And so February 12th will be another critical date in American history if uh, the, a decision is not made before. Well, if uh, 
Prosecutors prevail in the Supreme Court. Preparations for the criminal trial would resume, but many weeks will be needed to allow for essential processing of pretrial motions, of jury screening, before any actual trial could commence. And again, uh, you know, the Chutkin case, the Supreme Court timeline, everything just seems excruciatingly slow if you view the November deadline as a deadline. Now, if Donald Trump loses, then he loses, uh, I'm talking about in the election, he loses all of his support, this whole thing goes away, he, the reality of his penurious state becomes clear. And he's uh, But if to... he wins, he can pardon himself. Well, it may be. And then that goes to the Supreme Court as to you know whether or not it's... Uh... How did you get mobbed up with the Nixon administration, John Rothman? I always wanted to ask you that. Uh, it's, I, I knew Richard Nixon very well. Uh, it is too long a story to relate here. Uh, I've told it on the air before, but let me you just don't say, seem as though you would overlap too much in some of his politics. Although I, you know, maybe some Richard of them Nixon you do. was a was a liberal Republican. There's a wonderful book that was written several years ago. I interviewed the author on KGO, and that is uh, the last liberal Republican. Nixon, in many ways, was a liberal. Remember, we have the Environmental Protection Agency. We have all the cancer research that was done. We have. Uh, detente. We have so many things that Nixon did that really set the stage, including, by the way, going to China, uh, which changed the face of the world. So sure. there are many negatives to Richard Nixon, but there are many positives as well, and everyone needs to understand that. But when it comes to Donald Trump, uh, I think the Nixon precedent will stand, and I think there will have to be a decision. If it is delayed, I think it would be a blow to our democratic system. But you have to consider this. If the Republicans are put in the position of holding a convention and nominating Donald Trump, what do they do if, in the end, Donald Trump is ruled ineligible for the presidency? That's why they're rushing on this uh, 14th Amendment uh, case, and I think that's why immunity is going to be considered sooner rather than later. I don't know, John, that the 14th Amendment thing is going to get this I don't think it I mean, will the, remo the removal of 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 anyone Trump or I don't, anyone else I don't is think get their it will support from the Supreme Court yeah I don't think it will you and I agree I think the issue which really is the important one is the question of immunity and if Donald Trump is not allowed <laughs> to exercise immunity uh I think he's in big trouble because there'll be a lot more lawsuits that are going to follow him uh <laughs> boy the mention of Nixon really brought out the uh some uh some strong opinions. Uh, maybe that for another time. The last thing I wanted to ask you about was funding. You know, one of the things that they were unable to get going besides the impeachment of Mayorkas was funding for Ukraine and for Israel. I'm wondering if you can speak to yes, the inability the to get that. Yes, the extremes on what, both sides. Right. The extremes on both sides prevailed. The far right and the far left. Uh, and, of course, the Republicans are conflicted over the question of their own policy in terms of foreign policy isolationism has reared its ugly head. And I would suggest to you that one of the things that we should be talking about is if Donald Trump were to resume his presence at the White House, he says he's withdrawn from NATO. I want to remind you that uh, Dwight Eisenhower chose to run for president in 1952 because of a conversation he had with Bob Taft in 1951. Bob Taft was the presumptive Republican nominee, seemed to have it all locked up, the president's son, uh, all the rest. Uh, and when Taft told Eisenhower he would withdraw from NATO. Uh, Eisenhower said, I'm going to run because that will keep us in NATO if I win. And it was true. Uh, and I think that is going to be another major issue. Look, Mark, the issue of a woman's right to choose is now being debated in the Florida Supreme Court, uh, whether or not it will go on the ballot, whether it will be a return to Roe v. Wade, at least a vote on it in Florida. Uh, that's a question. The question of withdrawal from NATO, it's, it's, a, it's a pressing question. And we are going to have so many issues that we're going to have to confront if it's Trump versus Biden. And I think the clear choice will be that the American people have to make is whether we want to go back to isolationism or forward into internationalism, whether we want a woman to have the right to choose or not have the right to choose, what kind of judiciary we want. Do we want to have a fair and impartial judiciary uh, or do we want to have a Trump-inspired judiciary? And I had a discussion yesterday with someone who uh, was very upset. I spoke to a, a, a Rotary Club here in San Francisco, and the question came up about the Justice Department being weaponized. And of course, he was talking about the Biden administration weaponizing the Justice Department. I said, with all due respect, 
It is not Biden who has weaponized the Justice Department. It is Donald Trump who has announced he will weaponize the Justice Department. And I think all of these issues uh, play in. It's going to make it a fascinating game. Of course, the real question is, if Donald Trump is not the Republican nominee for president, uh, for whatever reason, uh, how does that change the nature of the race? And I would remind you that Joe Biden announced he was running for re-election, and the main reason he gave was to stop Trump from being in the White House. So there are a lot of factors here. Yeah, that's interesting. That's that's intriguing. Uh, let me just go back, though, to that funding on Ukraine sure. and Israel. Tell me what the future is for that. Eventually, Israel will receive funding. I have no doubt about it. Ukraine is a more ambivalent moment, uh, and that is because of the Republicans who are opposed to aid to Ukraine. Uh, they really believe it's a... Uh, it's not worth doing. But I have to tell you, if you talk to our allies, uh, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, uh, if you talk to uh, Hungary or Czechoslovakia, what was Czechoslovakia, now the Czech Republic, if you look at the actual Eastern European nations who were behind the Iron Curtain, uh, they will tell you, you've got to back NATO and you've got to help the Ukrainians because if they don't uh, solve this problem in Ukraine, Russia will come after us. And that brings me back to Vladimir Putin, who Donald Trump claims is a great friend, and I think Putin should be an issue in the election as well. Uh, so these are all questions which we cannot address in the short time that we have, but which our listeners should be aware as we get closer to November and we know who the nominees are. These will be the paramount issues in the election, and that's the reality. The Hamas offer that came across in the last day is for a full release of hostages in exchange for a 135-day ceasefire, a full Israeli withdrawal from Gaza, and the release of well over 1,000 Palestinian prisoners. I mean, it's a pretty big ask from Hamas. And Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has rejected the offer. Thoughts? Yeah, I'm not surprised. Uh, the Israeli public is not interested in cutting a deal with Hamas, which would only prolong the conflict or possibly renew the conflict. Uh, my real sense is that we are going to continue to support the Israelis in their effort, that we are going to work to release the hostages as much as we can, but the Israelis have limits as to what, what they can do. Uh, and uh, one of the things that's very interesting to me is the internal Israeli political dynamic, which we don't have time to discuss. But I do want people to know that if Netanyahu were forced to run for re-election today, he would lose. But the people who are the alternatives are not in favor of what is being proposed at this moment by Hamas. Tony Blinken is another question, our Secretary of State, who encourages the idea that some solution may come. I don't know how practical it is. Uh, the Israelis are determined to have the hostages released, but they're not going to inflict further damage on themselves. Uh, well, so it, you make it, uh, by the way, the quote from Netanyahu is uh, surrendering to Hamas's delusional demands that we heard now not only won't lead to freeing the captives, it will just invite another massacre. We will continue until the end. There is that no is, other solution. That is precisely correct. Victory. And by the way, can we separate in people's minds Netanyahu's personal popularity, which is at an all-time low in Israel, but the fact that he is the prime minister, there is a war cabinet made up of diverse people, many of whom are critics of Netanyahu's. Uh, so the Israeli people have a lot to contend with. They have to decide... How do we get the hostages out? How do we get the hostages out without doing ourselves more considerable damage? How do we deal with the fact that we have a prime minister who is extremely unpopular? I will make a prediction to you. When this issue is resolved, Netanyahu will no longer be prime minister of Israel. And Netanyahu uh, is what, is, what, what, what is this issue? The issue of what? The war. Gaza? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. And, uh, uh, the... But he has a problem because the right. minute he's out, he will be subject to prosecution. He'll be tried. Yeah, of course. Uh, Phineas asks, uh, Mark, ask John about Iran nukes, please. It's a serious problem. The United States is dealing with it. Iran continues to develop its nuclear capability. It does so in defiance of the world. Uh, all you have it was to do a is mistake for the last administration, the Trump administration, to pull out of the Iran nuclear deal? I think, personally, because I oppose the nuclear deal, I think the way Trump did it was wrong. And, he just uh, he just pulled the plug. Anything that Obama had done, he just pulled the plug on it right, right away. Right, short-sighted. Right. Uh, but you have to understand, the Israelis will not 
and I want to underline the word not, allow Iran to have a nuclear capability. One low-grade nuclear weapon, a bomb like the one that hit Hiroshima or Nagasaki, dropped on Tel Aviv, would mean Israel's complete destruction. Uh, so the Israelis are weighing that as well. Look, in Israel, there are deep political divisions. Uh, they debate every issue. But on the Iran nuclear question, there is near unanimity. There is a genuine fear of Iran, and I think it is uh, well-placed. May I just tell you, the Iranians have only one solution to the Middle East conflict, and that is the eradication of Israel. And their allies, like Hamas and Islamic Jihad and Hezbollah in Lebanon, feel the same way. Their solution to the Middle East is the elimination of Israel, and the Israelis are not going to stand for that, nor will the United States or most of the world. So it is an intractable problem, which will continue to fester, uh, I'm afraid, Mark, uh, for long after we are a distant memory. John, appreciate our visits. You can catch John's podcast every day. It's called Around the Political World with John Rothman, and I appreciate your presence here and your takes. As you say, there's a lot of serious historic stuff going on, and I look forward to our conversations yeah, every week. Let me just say, a lot is going to happen politically in the next week, including the Supreme Court, including the question of immunity, including a number of other issues involving the Republican Party, all of these things. And you can, when you tune into Around the Political World with John Rothman, get a glimpse. Uh, and we have 140,000 downloads as of this last week. And uh, I am delighted that we rebroadcast our participation with Mark Thompson. And I would be remiss if I didn't close by saying, support the Mark Thompson program. Oh, wow. I, I, want, you, yes, thank I want you, you to thank make you. sure that if you, you can subscribe, you do. That yeah. also applies uh, to uh, Nikki, uh, yeah. uh, uh, because she's also doing uh, Kim. She does a very good show. So yeah. my point is... What is your point, John? <laughs> support those who are keeping our industry, at least our ability to talk, alive. So yes. hit that button, yeah. smash the iron smash rod, it, smash and it. go with Mark Smash Tom. that like button for smash John it Rothman. with your iron Listen rod. Listen to that impassioned plea for all of us that are the guiding light, the North Stars, might I say, of all of these conversations. Thanks, John. My pleasure. Bye-bye. The Mark Thompson Show. Wow. John Rothman with a, a very passionate pitch there, Kim. You really hit it hard on you know going out with the uh, everybody. You mentioned Albert, even the fan yeah. favorite Albert. Albert, got thank a you. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. That Rothman. That Rothman. He is. Yeah. Uh, he's like a locomotive. You know. Yeah. You you, you point that locomotive someplace, it's and it starts going, and yeah. it just keeps going. He's he's like an information locomotive. You know. I uh, love our John Rothman. Kelly Malloy, what up, Kelly? Big shout out. Big shout out. Thank you for a super sticker for 10 bucks. We are a crowdfunded show, so I so appreciate your contributions. Kelly Malloy is always there for us, as is Wes. Big shout, Big shout out. out. Thank you for a five spot. Even when we're demonetized, they let us keep the super sticker super chat money, which is uh, the YouTube money. So here's my down payment, says Luis. Four ninety nine on my MT Elite membership. Yeah, we big shout, out. big shout out. If you missed it, Target is going to a membership like Costco, like Walmart Plus, like Amazon Prime. So there's going to be a monthly club that you'll be able to join at Target. It, they're planning this. It probably hatched later this year. And Luis is sort of implying that we should have our own little MT Elite Club. We kind of do, right? The PayPal and Patreon The Patreon and PayPal people yeah. probably are in it. Yeah, we'd have to grandfather all of them in, I think. Yeah. Um, so you got to figure figure this out. Um, the What is this from Stephen in Oregon? I had my Coachella Prince Princess this morning. I also had about a half a teaspoon of Jacksonville Rose from the Good Bean in Jacksonville. I don't get it. Oregon, my bad, I'm sorry. Jacksonville, Oregon, maybe. Is that what it is? Is that what he's saying? My bad. I got the my bad. I got that. My bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. French, he said French Rose. He's having trouble. He might be on his phone. Yeah, oh, French, French Rose. Oh, French Rose, not Princess. It's voice. Oh, it's, it's a voice. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, he's using the, the audio. roast French roast. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> What? I know. We don't have the edit option here in the chat. So. I just clicked it because I was curious about it, and it's got all of these, uh, uh, you know what it's like. It's, um, you know. It, it, it's it's you correct it. Right, exactly. At the door, like Costco? For Will you MCU? check receipts at the door like Costco? I don't know. We have to work it out, Russ. We're going to have to put together a blue ribbon panel and figure out how we do this MT Elite thing. We, wanna, we don't want Target to beat us to, uh, to the punch, but... We're just trying to get our meet and greet organized, which has been, we're supposed to do it in January. And now we'll do it maybe later this month. But I want to try to make do it at a time when everybody can make it. So I think, is that the same five from Wes or is that another five? Um, oh. I think we got that five. Kim, you are muted. Kim, you're muted and you're just punching buttons uh, in a kind of uh, drunken <laughs> stupor. So yeah. it's not working. I, it's a party um, at the I Mark Thompson House. I might be willing to bet my lunch that there's alcohol it involved. It does seem as though there's alcohol involved. I will say that. Yeah. So uh, anyway. What can you tell us about the scene? Kim's into the hooch early, Larry. That's what I can tell <laughs> What can you tell us about the scene? She's punching buttons. We don't know what the hell's that. What can you tell us about the scene? Kim's news and then you will not believe this. I could not work it into my conversation with John Rothman. But when we come back after Kim's news, something is going on in the House of Representatives. And it's not the Mayorkas impeachment. And it's not the funding for Ukraine or Israel. In fact, it's no legislation at all. What? But it will make you so angry when I tell you what it is. And I will. Kim's News next as we continue. Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister. This report sponsored by Tenuta Vineyards in Livermore. Something really horrible just happened live on the air on a Fox News broadcast. This was uh, host Sean Hannity, who was interviewing former Republican New York City mayoral candidate Curtis Sliwa. And the interview takes this wild turn when members of Sliwa's Guardian Angels group, live on air, give this man what he calls a little pain compliance to a person that he said is a migrant and who claimed he'd been caught shop, uh, shoplifting. His group, live on the air, surrounds this man and slams him to the ground as Slee was talking to Sean Hannity as if this is just a normal day. He said, this is the quote Slee was bragging to Hannity. His mother back in Venezuela felt those vibrations. He's sucking concrete. The cops scraped him off the asphalt. He's on his way to jail. The televised moment, shocking people who saw it, a lot of people taking to X to comment about this. Pretty surprising that it's just this blatant what wow. appears to be racism and this man being attacked on the middle of the street by vigilantes. That is extraordinary. Los yeah, Angeles. When they first when they first launched them, Sliwell, Sliwell's group in New York was a really uh, the, the Guardian Angels. Is that what they were called? Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, they, they were a real breath of fresh air because the police you felt were sort of um, overmatched by mm -hmm. crime in New York, crime on the subways, et cetera. And Sliwell led this group of really they were vigilantes, although they seemed to be kind of softer touch vigilantes. They wore the red berets and they had these t-shirts and they were, and they, they were on the subways and they were in the streets. And, and honestly, New Yorkers welcomed in large measure the guardian angels, this presence of people who you felt were on the side of justice. Since then, Sleewell's become this personality, the guardian angels, I don't know what they are. They're probably, you know, I, I don't know what they are, a fundraising group now. Maybe they still do some work. I just don't know. But he's got a radio show and he's become this personality that obviously is, uh, you know, taking brass knuckles to the law and order problem in New York. That's scary. Really scary. Very scary. Something else scary a Tennessee man arrested Monday after allegedly plotting to carry out a violent attack against federal agents at the U.S.-Mexico border, this apparently with the help of multiple militia groups. Paul Fay, 
of Cunningham, Tennessee, charged with possessing, selling, or transferring an unregistered firearm after nearly a year-long undercover investigation. He allegedly said he wanted to stir up a hornet's nest at the border and intended to coordinate the attack with militia groups from Kentucky, Georgia, North Carolina, and Tennessee. He said he hoped the news, allegedly, said he hoped the news of the violence would set off a domino effect in which others would then travel to the border to support his efforts. Los Angeles Police Chief Michael Moore expressing concern about one of his officers shooting a man to death who was holding a plastic fork. Moore told the police commission, which is in the process of investigating this deadly shooting on Sunday, uh, or not deadly, but this shooting on Sunday, uh, that the officer involved would likely be identified in the coming days. So Moore reviewed the body-worn camera footage of the incident, shows the man charging at the officer while holding the plastic fork. Then the officer opens fire, and yes, that man did die at a hospital. Former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley had been expected by many to win the Nevada Republican primary on Tuesday, but came up short with voters opting to choose none of these candidates. Yikes. A conflict of rules resulted in former President Trump not being on that ballot. He will, however, be in the running in Thursday's caucus and is expected then to cruise to victory. Haley has vowed to stay in the race against Trump, even if the polls have her trailing by double digits. I will say that President Biden did win on the Democratic side handily, so no problem with that. But that's kind of uh, embarrassing when the most voters choose none of these candidates over you. Ouch. The San Diego County Board of Supervisors is approving an assessment of subsidized child care for county law enforcement. The approval passed unanimously yesterday. In addition to that approval, the board also directed Interim Chief Administrative Officer Sarah Agassi to determine the short and long-term costs. The proposal included a statement saying the county loses about 20 deputies a month and the child care benefit would help attract and retain recruits. So maybe this is a way to help keep the officers uh, on the force. Desperate search uh, was underway for a missing Marine helicopter in California carrying five Marines. They've been flying from Creech Air Force Base near Las Vegas to Marine Air uh, Station Miramar in San Diego when the chopper was reported overdue last night. Uh, We do know that it looks like they may have found the aircraft, but they're still searching for uh, the people that were aboard. So um, we'll give you an update on that as we get it here on the Mark Thompson Show. Uh, it is a naked airport man. <laughs> this is Fort Lauderdale. A man in custody after apparently deciding to bear all at a Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. Broward County deputies arrested Martin Evtimov Monday for allegedly walking around the airport naked nudie. The 36 oh, wow. year old facing charges now that include exposing his sexual organs. It was disorder- wrong. It was stupid. And I'm trying to be a better person. No, not Disorderly accidental. intoxication. Sounds yeah. kind of deliberate. Resisting arrest. I mean, wow. the, it goes on and on. A judge yesterday ordered him to stay away from the airport and alcohol and drugs. Mm, uh, yeah. I see. They, well, that we know that there Where is. Where are my uh, weed smokers at? Yeah. yeah. I don't think yeah, maybe weeds would do. I feel like that's not the kind of. Maybe it does. I don't know. Maybe it makes you so you don't well, care It's kind of like a little taste of um, Friday Fabulous Floor that came a little bit early for us. That is true. Week. It's yeah, very. Uh, Albert, uh, had you had you had that on deck for Friday Fabulous Florida or probably and yeah Kim um sorry, I'm sorry I stole your thunder. Yeah. <laughs> well by the time Friday rolls around My we'll bad. have more information sorry, yeah. right all right Uh, Officially now, the border bill has failed. The Senate border security and foreign aid package is dead. It failed to get the necessary 60 votes to move forward in the chamber today after Republicans made it very clear they were strongly opposed to it. They claim it didn't go far enough to stop the flow of illegal immigration. Now, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer will drop the border provisions and force a vote to approve the aid for Israel, Ukraine and Taiwan. If uh, it's unclear, though, if Schumer has the votes to advance the foreign aid package or not. So we knew that was going to happen. And it's official that it actually did. The Supreme Court 
tomorrow hearing a case that could dramatically impact the 2024 presidential election. The court to consider whether Donald Trump is ineligible for a second term in office. The justices will hear arguments on the Colorado Supreme Court's ruling disqualifying Trump from appearing on the state's ballot. The justices, uh, Supreme Court for Colorado, all appointed by Democratic governors, agreed the former president took part in an insurrection during the 2021 Capitol riot. The former president's legal team says Trump's actions around the attack don't amount to insurrection. A decision is expected before the Super, uh, the Super Tuesday primaries next month. So we'll see how that all shakes out. Uh, it'll be interesting to even figure out what the arguments are for that tomorrow. Looking forward to hearing it. Um, did you know that it is the 60th anniversary today of the Beatles arriving in the United States for the very first time? Wow, I didn't know okay. that. 60 years later, we're still celebrating the Beatles arriving in America. After touching down at JFK Airport with frenzied fans greeting them, the Beatles held a news conference where reporters were talking about their hair and everything else. They continued into Manhattan, where the group performed two days later on the Ed Sullivan Show. So, uh, meantime, the Fest for Beatles fans was created 10 years later. It'll be held this weekend at uh, the TWA Hotel at JFK Airport. So, if you're oh, a Beatles you fan, go. um, that's going on. Mm -hmm. huh. Are you a Beatles fan? I love them. They were great. No question about it. I mean, they really were there at the, I was going to say, sort of the nexus of musical changes, like what was pop music was changing during the time that they were coming up. They sure. were, and you can tell it in their music. That's what's so wild. Like, you know, mm -hmm. they come in almost like a British invasion group with that, you know, I want to hold your hand if you think right. about that stuff. Like, that's, you know, so different than Hey Jude and, you know, these, uh, like what might might have been found on Abbey Road, these other songs that, uh, you know, Yellow Submarine, anything from that Sgt. Pepper album. You began to see that this group was influenced by all of these different styles and they integrated them so well into their songbook. I I did like the Beatles, you know, I just think. Yeah. Yeah, the Who, by the way, same kind of deal. If you listen to the early stuff from The Who, they came over with that British invasion thing and it's like, you know, my generation, it sounds different than like uh, Don't Get Fooled Again or whatever, you know what I mean? Bob O'Reilly, yeah. whatever the song is called. Um, I don't know. I'm not a you know musicologist. You can tell, but I'm just I respect those groups that can somehow or or, or artists who can somehow integrate a lot of different trends in music into their music. And uh, I thought they did that so well. Anyway, an initial report on a door plug blowout on a Boeing 737 Max 9 plane says it appeared to be missing four key bolts. The National Transportation Safety Board releasing the report about the incident that happened during a January 5th Alaska Airlines flight. The report released yesterday noted the door plug had been removed to repair rivets damaged during production. Nearly 200 of the Boeing jets were grounded by the FAA following this incident before being allowed to return to service late last month. During inspections, both United and Alaska Airlines reported having found loose parts on multiple MAX 9 planes that had been grounded. It's not a good look over there for Boeing. Yeah. Uh, this report, I mean, so yeah, let me just understand this. They, sure. so they, mm -hmm. They took out the four bolts, but they forgot to put them back in. Is that it kind was of what? Miss, it was missing four key bolts. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They I have a time. busy week. <laughs> I know. <laughs> putting, the, putting the bolts in just was a little. Yeah, the whole, the whole make the door list. was taken out to repair rivets that were damaged during production. I see. Or, I don't that... think rivets are the same as bolts. Uh, so then I they see. put it back, and then the bolts are missing. Uh, I see. We have processes and protocols mm -hmm. and standards. Of course, I understand. Yeah, no bueno. This report is sponsored by Tenuta Vineyards in Livermore. It's so pretty. Did you know that they have 25 acres on the property there? Wow. They have six acres of estate Chardonnay, mm -hmm. five acres of estate Pinot Noir, Ooh. an acre and a half of Pinot Grigio and Primitivo, oh, an acre each of Barbera, Sangiovese, Tempranillo, wow, wow. and Grenache. Yeah. It looks like Tuscany out there. I know. It's pretty great. I have to say, I, I'm a big fan. As you it's know, really, I love everybody really... over there. And they've done well with our proprietary yeah. um, blend of the Why are you yelling, are you yelling mm. red? And we also have the 
which one of you is Mark Thompson, a white wine, which is a perfect. Uh, I've really kind of grown to like white wine also. Really? Yeah. Mm. Doesn't stain your teeth. Some type of communist, are you? Is that what's happening? <laughs> so, <laughs> have I will you ever say... been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? <laughs> yes, that's it. It's part of the uh, Communist Party uh, introductory uh, toast that they give. It's the red wine. This winery, interestingly, is child friendly. You can bring your kid out there. Pet friendly, yeah. cyclist friendly. So a if you happen friendly. to be, you know, cruising by on the bike, just stop in. They um it, they do some events there, and this is cool because coming up is the annual Easter egg hunt, which is every Easter Sunday. And so check out the events page, Tenuta Vineyards in Livermore, and everything you order, everything you got going on out there, you get 10% off just for being a Mark Thompson Show listener. 925-699-4576 is the number to call. You say smash it with your iron rod, you get your 10% off, and it's good times. Mm -hmm. You got your wine coming to you in the mail, or you go out there tasting and doing what you do. Wow. Yeah, again, smash it with your iron rod. That is what you say. Call Rich at 925-699-4576. Mm -hmm. I'm Love Kim it. McAllister. This is The Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. Who's Mark Thompson? Feels great, baby. Let me kick down the door and talk to my cheap sons and daughters. No context will suffice to explain the hurt and anguish caused by my words. I apologize to all who have been hurt. I stand corrected. I misspoke. My words upset so many people. And I wanted to apologize to the Asian community, the Asian American community. God bless America. The end. There's never been anything like this. Do I hit it long? Is Trump strong? Huh? Who is having that conversation? It's fantastic. That's not fake. That's real. The science is ridiculous. How would you handle this? We could try ignoring it, sir. If you get it in order, you get extra points. Listen to me. I don't want to hear you. You cannot say you love your country. Where are my weed smokers at? This is a word from the Lord, and he's not happy. There is no defense for my conduct. It was wrong, it was stupid, and I'm trying to be a better person. Don't ever use that word. You get nothing! What's a guilty pleasure to do that? Seriously, what the f***? What up, everybody? Welcome to our Wednesday show. So glad you could be here. We're a crowdfunded show. We came from a radio station called KGO Radio in San Francisco. We took everybody from the radio station and we moved over here because the radio station changed format to become a gambling sports uh, stream of shows. So like every show on the station is about gambling on sports. And... Um, as a sports gambler myself, I'll tell you, I can't imagine <laughs> listening to it for very long, but be that as it may, uh, maybe it works out for them, maybe it doesn't. We moved our entire effort here to YouTube, so we're crowdfunded. That's you know how we pay salaries. That's how we can continue up and running, and we appreciate you giving us a thumbs up and helping to grow the, the channel to... Uh, subscribe and to otherwise share the show helps us as smash well it and with your iron yeah rod. smash the uh the like button uh, like a boss with uh, a thumbs up I uh, if you want to be part of our community it's uh, the mark thompson show.com and there are hot links to patreon and paypal what's that kim i forgot to tell you my gambling story that i had on the newscast and i left it off oh uh i do have a gambling story and this is one that i, I want your opinion on because usually i think it's good to win anything right because you you give your money you're not expected to get anything back really all right, hang on a second. Gambling story. All right, we'll give it up. 
Uh, the Mark Thompson Show. I'll give it a little sting before we start. This is a gambling story from it's Kim. Okay, it's go a ahead. lottery story. So in right. this instance. Yeah. Lottery the, is gambling. I agree. The, go ahead. The Mega Millions draw happened last night. Right. right? No one gets the $365 million prize, but wow. in Napa, in Napa, mm-hmm. at the Napa Bowl, which is a bowling alley, one ticket had five numbers, but not the Mega Ball number. What? Wow. So that okay. still pays a lot. It pays a million and a half. Right. That's a lot where I come from. So, but I'm, here's what I'm thinking. You've got, basically, you've got one chance to get all the numbers. You're not going to get a f- ticket with five numbers and then sometime in your life get a ticket with six, right? Like you got as close as you're ever going to get. So isn't it kind of a bummer that you got that close? Because that was your one shot and you, boom, done. <laughs> the ticket, <laughs> like at this point, keep your million that and a half. Is, you are, I, I wanted the 365 million. You're I'm the usually worst. A, you, you, I'm, this usually, is the, I'm a glass I, half full kind of girl, except in this one instance. You are instance, not a glass half full kind of girl. I am the in this one instance. We start this show with five, a fan favorite, Albert, and what's the first thing you go, Albert? What am I? Nothing. I mean, like, I'm, <laughs> oh, oh, he's a favorite. I'm not. Why are you yelling? So, no, you are not. You are not a gal. Ga- Imagine so that you're you get, telling me you get this all is, five numbers, but you miss the mega ball number. What I mean, has this is happened BS. to our society where you could stick the 1.5 million honestly I just, because I, you just don't get it. I don't. Do you? You're right. You don't. I don't get it. Okay. Ridiculous. She's telling me. Kim is telling me. I'd rather miss it completely yes. than get five of them and only get, this is how crazy yeah. our society is, <laughs> only get a million and a half dollars. I mean, it's like, Because you're yeah, never going to get that close again. Oh, my God. You see what God, I'm telling you? Lunacy. Like, I don't this even is know what to do with this. Shot, your one shot you were going to get oh, close. Your one yellow. shot to win. Oh. Oh my God. And you God. miss it by one measly number. God, this is so mad. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, this Mark. Is... More, mo- more money for me, you and me, Mark. Oh I'll, my take, God. That. I'll Albert, take all that money. It, this makes no sense. How could you possibly look at a million and a half windfall as anything but a win? Somehow, if you come because... home to Kim, honey, honey, you won't believe this. We're going to get a million and a half dollars. <laughs> I got five of the six I needed. Really? You used up our one shot on five correct ones? Do you realize what we didn't win? What do you mean what we didn't win? I got a million and a half dollars. That's what I'm saying. I suppose that's one way to look at it. $365 million. You're one number away from it. Oh, my God. You're never going to get all five numbers again, or <laughs> even all six numbers again. And we'll never win a one and a half million dollars ever again. Just like, statistically, oh, it was you. almost impossible thank to get the you. five numbers. Thank you. That's the point. Ask you're, ma- you're making your own point, and you can't even uh, understand it. Why are you yelling? Dumb. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. I love it. Anyway, congratulations, whoever yeah. it was in Napa. Yeah. If you could go to our Patreon and PayPal page. <laughs> This is 810 The Spread. TheMarkThompsonShow.com. <laughs> I think you're special. And Thank you. click through to either, and you can drop us a, uh, a one-time even PayPal or Patreon contribution. That is the funniest breakdown on a million-and-a-half-dollar <laughs> lottery winner that I have ever heard. So congratulations. Oh, the Mark Thompson Show. Meantime, in Washington, D.C., where we expect them to do something, I mean— We send these legislators to Washington, the seat of power. It seems as though now they they don't do a lot on the GOP side. They talk a lot. I see them on television a lot. I find them on the internet a lot and find them on various platforms across YouTube. But they finally have done something. I know that they didn't get the Mayorkas impeachment. You know, they missed that by one vote. They didn't get the funding for Ukraine or Israel. They tied that to a border bill. They couldn't get that, even though the border bill was largely what they wanted. But the one thing that GOP leaders did agree on and actually got done was a $40,000 spend on new congressional lapel pins, everyone. Oh, yeah, that's nice. They needed the new ones. Because they didn't like the color of the old ones, everyone. Yeah. 
Somebody had to have the guts in this country to stand up and say, I don't like the color of these pens. We need new pens. And they'll get them. All 435 members of the House and the six non-voting members get new congressional pins. There you see them. It's not the Crayola pen there. No. She no. Uh, has an extra pin. Mm -hmm. The new pin is a, um, uh, well, these pins are things that House members wear because they... Capitol Hill cops, et cetera, see that and they go, oh, okay, that's, you know, so-and-so. Or that's somebody who is a member of the House. So the U.S. Capitol Police use it. Um, spouse and family members, spouses and family members, are allowed to get similar, though not identical, pins to identify them. And um, it's also a memento for members and spouses, uh, notes one lawmaker. They're going to spend forty grand on a memento? Well, they were given new pins in 2023, just last year. Um, but they wanted newer new pins, and so they ordered these newer new pins. And it, as I say, is used to ID them, and also they like the newness. We're not happy with the color of the pin. No. So now it's gone from that bold green that you saw to deep navy blue with a thicker gold border. You see it right there, yes. The pins also show the great seal of the United States, an eagle with its wings spreading as it holds a set of arrows in its left foot, an olive branch in its right. Yeah. And um, It's very pretty, but I ask, why would, do we need pins at a cost of 40 grand? Can we save that money? Well, we need pins. Can we pins buy an ashtray because, for a plane or something? No, they do <laughs> They do <laughs> wear the pins as a form of identification, as I was mentioning. Oh. So, but, but that's the old pin with the green, and apparently that was not going down well. Right, Albert? They wanted to essentially... Yeah, the green looked kind of cool, though, with the contrast. Everything is red, white, and blue, you know? The green would be a nice little... Uh, I like the green. Yeah. yeah, I like the green, but it didn't go over, and so they, uh, they decided to... You know, spend 40K and, uh, and get This is it. a man with anger. This is a man that has resentment towards you. It no, could be. They always the house... seem to find the most expensive stuff, too, Mark. Just go yeah. on Amazon. Just make, you could even make your own pins. And make yeah, you're right. They're like, why, uh, where are they getting their pins done? Yeah. They're not, spe they're, aside from the way they look, there's nothing special about them. There's not, there's not embedded with a, a code or a chip or anything. They're just regular pins. But, um, Anyway, I'm glad they got their pins. And you they, just I, don't get it. Do I you? don't get it. I you don't. don't. No, you're right. I don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, so that's the latest uh, in what's uh, a forty thousand dollars spend that the House of Representatives have got done. The Mark Thompson can, Show. At least they can agree on something. Yeah, that's my point. I mean, at least yeah. they're getting something done. Uh, there are layoffs, layoffs, layoffs. DocuSign laying off another four hundred people. San Francisco-based maker of tools for filling out forms online, saying that they're giving pink slips to 400 employees. I'm kind of surprised by that because I thought DocuSign would be a pretty, you know, lucrative, popular business. A lot of people sign in their documents remotely, need to do it in a secure fashion. And I, I mean, I don't know why the business is failing like that. Yeah, I agree with Kim. I mean, yeah. everywhere I look, I see DocuSign. It seems like the company's out there, but we never know what's going on internally. Mm -hmm. They say 6% of their uh, their staff at DocuSign is going to be uh, laid off. They, I believe, had two other rounds of layoffs. Yikes. Yeah, this is the third major job cut, they say. So, uh, sadly, people are out of work in the San Francisco Bay Area there. With DocuSign, they cut around 670 workers in September, 700 more in February of um, this past year, and several tech companies have laid off workers in multiple rounds. As you know, this has not been a pleasant period. Snapchat, they're called Snap. They're laying off 10% of their staff. Mm. 500 jobs going away. A staff spokesperson said the cuts were done in part to promote, quote, in-person work. We are reorganizing our team to reduce hierarchy and promote in-person collaboration, is the quote. We are focused on supporting our departing team members, and we're very grateful for their hard work and many contributions to SNAP. 
Are you focusing on supporting your departing team members? No. <laughs> how, how are you going to be doing that? You're not be doing paychecks anymore. We know that. Mm-mm. Yeah. Since 2022, the tech sector has been taking hits. Yeah. And here's one for you. JPL is slashing 8% of their workforce. And the reason for that has nothing to do with how JPL works. It has everything to do. And it's far different than what we saw in the case of Snapchat and what we saw with DocuSign and other tech companies. This has nothing to do with those sorts of market forces. This has everything to do at NASA's JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory, with uncertainty about federal funding. Oh, that's too bad. Exactly. It's awful. They're in Pasadena. They say that layoffs will impact technical and uh, support staff, 40 contractors as well. And because of uncertainty about federal funding, they have to make adjustments to adhere to budget allocation they have. In a memo, JPL Director Lori Leshin told staffers the lab has not received approval for its 2024 fiscal year budget. $300 million is anticipated for its Mars sample return project. You know, that's where they're sending the spacecraft to Mars. It'll actually scoop up samples and return them to Earth. What could possibly go wrong? The mission is being planned in collaboration with the European Space Agency, but it, again, some of this stuff is sidelined, waiting for congressional approval on the fiscal budget. So JPL being hard hit by the same kind of paralysis that have that has affected so many other things. And TikTok laid off a bunch of uh, workers as well. They cut about, um, I believe they cut 60 jobs. So, um, and of course the, t- the TikTok. Have you uh, ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? Yeah, the TikTok. Was he, who was he, the CEO of TikTok who had to deal with that? Josh Hawley? Have you ever been a member of the Chinese Communist Party? Wasn't that it? Yeah. I believe that was the TikTok. Uh, TikTok CEO the other day. We have another closure of talking about businesses. In Petaluma, there was this company called Camelback. Maybe you've heard of them. They make those kind of backpacks where you... Of course. Your water can, and stuff. And it was yeah. that was manufactured in Petaluma as well as all their stainless steel cups and things, the Camelback products. And they're closing down and giving. And it, they, they got bought and absorbed by some other companies. I so see. Yeah, because they were doing Their well, factory here is closing. And also La Tortilla is shutting down in Sonoma County. They've been making tortillas for 50 years in Sonoma County and they got bought by some company and they're moving to Kansas. So that is unreal. Yeah. Wow. Kim, what's happening? Buying up, merging, moving. Mm. It's all there. Well, this is a time of economic growth, but you can still see how there are Areas of the economy that are being hard hit, even as you know, jobs reports are strong and inflationary reports are strong. There's a pretty um, they're cross currents in the economy, and they have they're pretty complicated cross currents at that. And many can end up out of work. You saw that for the first time in two decades, the United States is buying more from Mexico than China. No, more I didn't goods see that. coming from yeah. Mexico than China now. Wow! For the first time in twenty years. This is how global patterns have shifted. Economic global patterns have shifted. Uh, And you saw that Donald Trump, I mentioned this the other day to Anthony Davis, I believe, that Donald Trump was crowing about the Chinese tariffs. You'll recall that when his administration began, he put tariffs on Chinese goods. And that's a do you understand a penalty, if you want to think of it that way, or a tax or a, a, an added fee that consumers pay? We pay that. China doesn't pay it. So when you, it sounds like a kind of a flex. Yeah, I'm putting these tariffs on Chinese goods. Yeah, well, that doesn't mean that anything's going to happen in terms of the Chinese goods, apart from the fact that there's now going to be a tariff on them paid by Americans. So Chinese stuff gets more expensive. Um, but China doesn't endure any kind of, now the thinking is if you, I, I suppose if you added, you know, enough to those tariffs, it would affect, 
you know, movement of those Chinese goods across retail establishments in America. But the reality is that Americans were getting pinched by that. It still polls very well. People never really did understand that it was a tax on them, on the Americans. It's, again, another one of these things. That's more political, and that more speaks to the body politic, you know, the way people think and the electorate thinks. But what I would say in terms of this change in imports is this speaks to the way Mexico is outpacing China in terms of movement of goods into this country. I also think that this happens at a time when we're on, I'll just say, the relationship between Washington and Beijing isn't as warm as it used to be. Yeah, And so... As you look at the supply chain, accentuated by what we saw during COVID, we're going, oh, my God, all our stuff, you know, stuff we need for inoculation, stuff we need for PPE, it all comes from China. The entire basket of things required to treat this pandemic comes from China. In the meantime, Trump's calling China names. He's calling it the China virus, et cetera. And it was, regardless of your party affiliation, it was, I thought, a clarion call to the fact that we have to have stuff here in this country to address a lot of these issues that might arise in a pandemic. So you need PPE in this country. You need um, syringes that are produced yeah. here, et cetera. It's well, sometimes it's, hard to do because labor is so much cheaper overseas. Well, they say it's always bad to put your all your eggs in one basket, right? You gotta. I haven't heard that. Yeah, yeah, you haven't. No, <laughs> all six no, eggs, not. Kim. Just not five eggs. We need all six it. eggs. Yeah. I gotta get him. Kim. How are you? <laughs> all right, uh, Kim. I have a question for you related to eggs, and so uh -oh. let me. Uh... I... The Mark Thompson Show. I do am the kids sitting, still I'm do sitting um... in the egg basket of the world right here in Petaluma? You know, it is true. Petaluma yeah. does a lot of the um, the egging. There's a lot Matter of fact, the yeah. uh, the butter and eggs day parade and festival was just announced this year. It'll be in uh, late April. So, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, I may want to on your it. calendars, Pox everybody. And the Poxitani film announcement. The butter. It's a butter and eggs. Is that what you said? Yeah. Butter, butter and butter and eggs festival. Yeah, butter and eggs so, day. Yeah. What, what do they do with butter and eggs? They just we celebrate our agricultural heritage here in Petaluma as the it. egg basket of the world. And, and, and how do you celebrate your? We have a parade heritage? where tractors roll down the street and firefighters uh, honk their horns as they roll down the street. Wow! The marching band. There's never been anything you know, like this. Well, it does sound pretty cool. Yeah, it's good times. I, and then there's a lot you, of there's a lot of drinking afterward. I see. Beer tents oh my around. god! Yeah. I knew we were yeah. going to get to that. There's right. a lot of booze happening. They drink oh, butter wow. or the eggs. What do they uh, drink? Or is it yeah, not? Yeah, um, uh, no, it's not that kind of party. Neither one. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what time does the parade start? <laughs> 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 is this a day I have never event? heard of something like that. Thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you, thank yeah, you. Yeah. There is nothing in, in our, our history, history that quite compares. To this. Well, I guess they yeah. do it every year, though. Right? Nobody has ever put it. something like this together well, no, that I've ever that's seen. That's not correct. They put it Heart together every year. Heart attack and cholesterol day, you know. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it before. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sorry, back all right. to the question. Uh, the question was, what do you do for Easter? Do you do anything special? Oh, yeah. We have a, an Easter egg hunt, usually. Oh, you uh, do? The, the bunny okay. comes. I remember what happened last year. No, what happened? <laughs> the bunny hung the eggs on the front door as is policy in this house after putting all the eggs together and the other bunny was supposed to go hide the eggs and slept in and so the kid gets up and finds the eggs hanging in a target bag on the back of the front door <laughs> i'd be willing to bet my lunch that there's alcohol involved and this is the way he finds out that Everybody, clo close your ears. There's no Easter Bunny. Oh, my God. There's no Santa Claus. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is really And then he says, does that out. mean the Tooth Fairy's not real? That's what it's all. <laughs> Someone did this to spoil our Christmas. Oh, Happy Easter. <laughs> yeah. Oh, little three for three. Well, uh -huh. honestly. Um, Would you like to apologize for what you've done? Yeah, you may want to apologize. But I was thinking that it, he'll have that story forever. You know, yeah. that's the great thing. Let me tell you how I found out. Yeah.
So um, my parents slept in. You you didn't think of going with? Oh my gosh, this is amazing! The Easter Bunny already hunted them all and put them in the bag here on the door. This is incredible. This is like maybe the best the Easter parent. ever. There's never been anything like this. I was Did not you? that quick on my feet, and I was asked point blank. Oh, is you were the Easter Bunny real? I was asked a direct oh. question by a nine-year-old. So. Did you? Yeah. I would have looked right back at that nine-year-old, and I would have said, <laughs> "The spirit of Easter is so real," and I'm yes. so glad you asked that question. You know, no, and they go, "No," but I want to know: Is the Easter Bunny? Now, when you say Easter Bunny, I need to know exactly what you mean by that. You, know, you could you could have tried Stonewall, but I hear you. At some point, you got to give it up. I understand. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that. The Mark Thompson Show. Oh, that was a charming Easter story. That was better than I could have hoped. I want to hear other ways that you've disappointed your kids when we come oh, back. I'm but sure first, I'll make a list. Yeah. I'd like a, give me a little turbo news, and then I want oh. to do stories from the sky. I've got a tremendous stories from the sky. Can you just give me a handful of um, of key news stories? As uh, Are you trying to say my newscasts are too long? Not at all. In fact, you're. Uh, I've told you this before, I and mean, I've told you this I, off there, and I, I know you're trying to gin up some kind of hostility because that seems to be your new thing. Kim, how are you? I don't know why you're doing it, but you do. And uh, you know what I've told you off the air. What have I told you off the air? Oh, you like About the your newscast. You like the news. You think it's great. I've said it's the yeah. best part of the show oh. is what I've said. Well, okay. that's nice. so, I don't Except when she's stealing right. my Florida stories, Kim. We got oh, yeah, to save that's the that's ammunition. Really, sorry. Yeah, really. Albert, bad. thank you. Yeah. I'd like to apologize to the Albert community today. Yes, you, and Albert has had to reassert himself uh, yeah. as a powerful Asian. And I wanted to apologize yeah. to the Asian community, the yeah. Asian American community. <laughs> did that in the first hour, if you missed it. Uh, so uh, we don't have much time. So you just give well, me like right you know, through it. Do it. Yeah, uh, do what you can. Smash the mm -hmm. like button like a boss, Smash if you it would. With your iron rod. Uh, Kim's news, and then I do want to give you some stories in the sky. There's something going on on a carrier. That could never happen in this country, but it will astound you, and it is happening in another country. And you'll, I think you'll smile, but you'll agree with me, that would never go down in the USA. That, when Stories of the Sky gets started after Kim's News, Mark Thompson Show. The Mark Thompson Show. On the Mark Thompson Show, I'm Kim McAllister. Big doings in Oakland. Former Oakland Police Chief Leron Armstrong is now filing a lawsuit against the city of Oakland and Mayor Sheng Tao, saying he was illegally fired last year. Former Chief Armstrong says he was fired in retaliation for his courage in speaking out about misconduct by Oakland uh, Police Department's federal monitor, Robert Warshaw. Uh, the lawsuit alleges uh, Armstrong's firing violated California law and his First Amendment rights rights in connection to Mayor Tao's decision to fire him last February. So we'll see how that uh, lawsuit continues. Um, I do want to tell you that the Senate border security and foreign aid package is officially dead. If you didn't uh, hear it, the bill failed to get the necessary 60 votes to move forward in the chamber today after Republicans made it very clear they were strongly opposed to it. They claim it doesn't go far enough to curb the flow of illegal immigration, even though they helped negotiate that deal. Forecasters say another storm is on the way for Southern California. Mark's garage is about to get flooded again. The National Weather Service in Oxnard posting a statement saying, don't let this morning's break in the weather fool you because more rain and mountain snow is coming this afternoon and tonight. The forecast calls for a trough of low pressure to move down from Alaska, causing several hours of rain near the California coast in Southern California. We have been getting pounded in the Bay Area today with rain as well. This missing Marine helicopter found in California, but five Marines remain unaccounted for. The third Marine aircraft wing saying the chopper was found in Pain, a Pine Valley, more than 40 miles east of San Diego. A search and rescue operation is underway to find the five missing Marines. Again, the Supreme Court tomorrow hearing the case that could impact the 2024 presidential election. The high court considering whether Donald Trump is ineligible for a second term in office. Justices will hear arguments on the Colorado Supreme Court's ruling disqualifying Trump from appearing on that state's ballot. I also do want to let you know that the man who calls himself pro-life Spider-Man... 
You can't make this up. Says he scaled the Las Vegas sphere to raise money for a pregnant woman. Maison Deschamps posted a video to his Instagram account from the top of the 366 foot tall Las Vegas sphere. Las Vegas police took him into custody after his climb. Apparently, he pulled a similar stunt in Phoenix during the Super Bowl last year. <laughs> U2 is scheduled to perform at that venue tonight. And what we know is he is in custody, I guess, raising money for a pregnant woman. It's supposed to he make might, it okay. He might need that money for bail, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. bail money. Forget the pregnant lady. Get me out of jail. Yeah. Uh, this report is sponsored by you. We count on you to support The Mark Thompson Show and keep us in business over here. Find us at themarkthompsonshow.com, themarkthompsonshow.com. It does work. And if you have problems with the website, check it on your cell phone, themarkthompsonshow.com. Patreon, PayPal link, all right there for you, along with the merchandise link and uh, the podcast links and other things. So definitely worth, ch worth checking out. I'm Kim McAllister, and this is The Mark Thompson Show. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Shadow Stevens. This is The Mark Thompson Show. Keep it to yourself. Who's Mark Thompson? Yeah. Right on, everybody. Right on. I think Shadow cut those for us, Albert, when we were on the radio. I'm Shadow Stevens. This is the Mark Thompson Show. Keep it to yourself because now we can't have people keep it to themselves. We have to have people share the show, share the shorts, share a video that you liked. Because if you put it on your Facebook page or whatever you kids do with that Facebook or the Facegram or whatever it is, if you MySpace. guys put it out there, yeah, MySpace, <laughs> put it on that MySpace page. Yeah. And that helps grow our audience. As we close in on 25,000 subscribers, it's pretty great because we started just sweating 1,000 and 5,000, and we hope to keep growing it. But the audience, I always say it, you guys are the reason the show grows. No question in my mind. Try to give you good content. Try to give you interesting, fun content. Try to give you great guests and great takes on things. But if you don't show up, you don't share, you don't support, we don't exist. So... How about some stories from the sky? Albert, if you would, please. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Enough is enough! I have had it with these monkey fighting snakes on this Monday to Friday plane! Everybody strap in! This could never happen in the United States of America, my friends. But it is going to happen. Oh, yeah. An airline announcing they will now weigh passengers as well as their carry-on luggage what yes this controversial move comes from finnish carry of finnair they said they are now measuring passengers departing from helsinki 500 volunteer customers have participated in the weigh-ins well i mean of course volunteers are not going to have any issues they're probably carrying light stuff they essentially are saying, what? <laughs> you need to know like how much fuel to carry, right? To carry that's the true. certain weight. Yeah. And I guess that's what they're they saying. They also weigh the bags, too. They weigh the bags. They make sure it's yeah. under a certain weight so they can weight and balance the aircraft. Yeah. Thank you, Albert. They use a Albert, thank you. A an average weight system now. Yeah. Uh, assumed to be uh, 88 uh, kilograms. Uh, what is that, Albert? 88 kilograms? Google it. Uh, it is, is America. That is, <laughs> <laughs> that is the metric system, right? That is uh, 194 pounds. That's the average that they apparently apply to each passenger. And they say now that they want to weigh everybody and their bags. Of course, they're all skinny, says Beth, right? <laughs> um some social media users have been horrified by the announcement. They argue that it will lead to embarrassment for overweight passengers, and the plan is cruel. That said, they feel as though this is the right way to proceed, does Finnair, but many people are saying we will not be flying Finnair anytime soon as a result of this policy. Good day, sir! Yeah. Um... 
it does feel a little extreme, but I understand that they, you know, need to. I mean, wasn't be- Southwest uh, last month trying to do a plus size? Um, I think they're trying to do something with plus size passengers. No. Oh. They could uh, accommodate them too. So I, I think those might be the same influencers who were <laughs> complaining about this, who were applauding that. Chris says this should have been done years ago. Boeing workers, as we continue with stories from the sky, the union in Boeing land threatening to go on strike if they don't get 40% pay raises. This what? as <laughs> Boeing. <laughs> like, don't you have to do a good job to get a pay raise? Well, I mean. Who is having that conversation? I guess the union feels they are doing a good job. I mean, don't you think you, if you're the management, you look at them and say, you know what? Ask me for a raise when you don't suck. Okay. But <laughs> Boeing's. <laughs> They pay me a lot of money for having attitude. <laughs> John Holden, who's president of uh, IAM District 751, represents about 32,000 Seattle area Boeing mechanics, saying that the union is prepared for a work stoppage as the contract talks loom next month. Quote, our goal is to negotiate a contract that we as the union leadership and our members can accept. We don't take going on strike lightly. But we are willing to do it. Uh, Boeing and the union have both been named as parties of this investigation that the NTSB is doing, as you know. Uh, yeah, exactly, except for the bolt installation people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, again, the blowout on that Alaska Airlines MAX 9 that happened on the January 5th on that flight... Uh, that was the result of, you know, issues, right? Yeah. Boeing has since then identified additional issues, as you're well aware, with their fuselage. We've detailed them for you. While we focus on the 737-9 and the actions we're taking on quality, we look forward to bargaining in good faith later this year, said a company spokesperson. Strike, though, would shut down Boeing plants in Washington, Oregon, and, you know, they make a lot of money on these 737 jets. It would shut down that production completely. They're supposed to resume contract talks March 8th. A Virgin Atlantic flight to New York has a screw or two loose on it and crews get on the plane wing and drill it down. Uh Uh-oh. It was spotted by a passenger, everyone. Very nice. Thank God someone's paying attention. This is in the UK. This uh, (laughs) Virgin Atlantic flight... That was due to depart from you, Manchester, England, to New are you York. Are kidding me? I'm actually asking right now, can I get off this flight? I need to be on a different plane. <laughs> no, well, I'll tell you, I have a different view. I think it's great, and whoever no. is the passenger that spotted those screws loose, could you please go out and inspect the rest of the plane? That's what I would like to see. The question is, he, he looked where he could see out his window. What, right. are they, what did he not see? Like, what else is wrong with this plane? Right. That's why I'd like to get that passenger out to help with the inspection. We've identified someone who clearly can identify issues with the plane better than many people who are charged with actually maintaining the plane. They thought they saw screws missing, and as it turns out, there were four missing fasteners that needed to be attended by a maintenance worker. That's the video that you're seeing. That guy is literally drilling in those fasteners and bolts that had apparently fallen off. Virgin Atlantic says no one was at risk. (laughs) So uh, that was an Airbus A330, by the way. It was not a Boeing aircraft, just to uh, let the Boeing people off the hook. Um, This does not inspire confidence. An American Airlines pilot who taxied into the path of a departing Delta flight at JFK claims along with uh, his co-pilot that they were distracted by last-minute paperwork. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it happens. My hands are shaking. I'm in shock. (laughs) (laughs) The... uh, the, I'd be willing to well, bet my lunch that there's alcohol involved. No, there was no alcohol involved. No. Pilots of the American Airlines Boeing 777 said they were distracted by paperwork when they taxied into the wrong path. Disaster was averted after an air traffic controller stepped in 
and was heard saying the S word and <laughs> telling Delta 1943, the flight number, to cancel the takeoff clearance. These uh, American Airlines pilots claiming that it was a distraction that uh, led to the entire incident. Wow. That's embarrassing. What kind of paperwork was so important that you can't drive the plane? Well, you have two of you up there. Do you can right. can one of you keep an Look. eye on the on the road? Yeah, if it's a triple seven, I think there could be two or three or even four. The paperwork is probably wait the the weights, the final numbers. Oh, I see. Of the plane. Yeah, interesting. So it's not as though it's nothing, but I mean it is the leaked memo out of United Airlines is revealing a crackdown on something that everyone does on the plane. And that is check their phone for texts or for other communications. Yeah, passengers aren't the only ones who yeah. use their phones on board. The crew does too. And so now United Airlines is threatening to crack down on and even fire flight attendants who use personal devices aboard the aircrafts. Use of a personal electronic device and or accessory is not permitted while customers are on board the aircraft. Our United is saying that flight staffers can't provide visible and attentive service to customers if they're looking at their phone. <laughs> yeah. Well, you I mean, realize... as with any any job, right? Sure. Well, you've seen these huge train accidents because somebody said, I mean, literally, that you right. can just Google it. I mean, it's scary. So many different train accidents as a result of people checking their phone or bus accidents, et cetera. I mean, mm -hmm. but with major transport vehicles, oftentimes looking down at the phone, sending a text is the thing that does them in. So, Google it. Yeah, Google it. It's pretty... It's pretty intense. Um, I need to wrap this up, Albert, even though I do have some additional stories from the sky stories. Can I push them to tomorrow? I need your blessing on that, sir. Yeah, I think we have a lot more. I just found another one with flamingos. Okay. Oh. That I just added <laughs> wow. in there, but we'll have to get to that one uh, tomorrow. All right. Albert, thank Let's you. Let's do that tomorrow. For now, that is Stories from the Sky. This has been Stories from the Sky. The captain has turned off the seatbelt sign, and you are now free to move about the cabin. I can't believe it, Albert, that uh, we, we've we used up all the time. Albert, thank you. Yeah. Linda Galdieri. Come on, Yay! Linda. Big shout out. Big shout out. Big shout out to Linda for a 10 what spot a in the super sticker. Pretty thank picture, you, Linda. That Linda means too. a lot. Yeah. You look pretty gorgeous. lady. Yeah, pretty lady for sure. And uh, speaking of pretty ladies, Kim makes her move over to the after party live. Well, do it live! I can go it, and we'll do yeah. it live! Uh, John Daly, he does it with uh, Kim, and it's a kind of fun show, and I recommend yeah. it. So that's over there on the after party live. Yeah. She chit 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 chits and he <laughs> corrects her, and it's all, it's fun. Uh, Albert will be here with me tomorrow. Albert, thank and you. And Kim. Kim, how are you? Tomorrow, David Katz. The former federal prosecutor will talk about the Trump stuff, but I also have a couple of other pending SCOTUS I'm cases Sheldon to Stevens ask him about. The Mark Johnson Show. Yeah. Bye bye. And we'll ask Josh. him about the 14th Amendment case, of course, that's time. there at bye SCOTUS. Bye. So, David Katz, also Josh Robert Thompson yeah. tomorrow. Till then, bye bye.